Hello, hello everyone. This is Sia with Black Petal Gardening. I am here in the Pacific Northwest in Oregon to be exact and my zone is 8B. And today, as you can see here, I am going to be going over a few seeds that I have procured since the last seed haul that I did. Um, I'll be honest, I wasn't actually expecting to necessarily purchase the number of seeds that I did. I guess I'm not immune to, <laughs> to that disease of uh, seed collecting. So what we're going to do is we will start from the, the right and go to the left. Now you can kind of see from um, what you see here, a couple of the companies that I purchased seeds from, unfortunately, they do not provide visuals on their seed packets of what the seeds are um, going to produce. So that doesn't really make the best uh, video content. You know, you don't have the beautiful uh, photos that you do or drawings that you do here from the botanical interest. So what I did is I went to each one of the sites and I looked at um, their descriptions of the seeds that I purchased and cobbled together kind of a quick description, very, very brief description of, you know, what the seeds are going to provide. Um, for some of them, um, particularly the Johnny seeds, I looked at the photos that they had and used some of that to help me give a a verbal picture of what to expect so hopefully that'll be helpful and if you decide you know something catches your eye or I guess your ear in this case um, that you would be more interested in learning about I will be giving you the websites of course that um, I purchased from and you'd be able to go there and get a an actual <laughs> image of, of what um, I have decided to to purchase I will say that this is the first time I have purchased from either of these two companies. So in going over these, I am not giving any kind of specific support or suggesting any making any specific purchases from them. I'm not in a position at this point to say whether this is a good company, bad company, good seed, bad seed, or anything like that. Maybe at the end of the season or into next year, I will have um, a little bit of experience under my belt and then I can give uh, a fair assessment of what my results were. Um, on that note, we are going to start over here and Victory Seed Company is not a company I'd heard of before, but um, I did decide to purchase a, a handful, we'll say, of more of new to tomato seeds. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you do know that I've bought a, a good number of seeds, not, nothing over the top, from Baker's Creek and watching our seed starting videos and any, you know, subsequent, they've, they've come along all right. Um, some of them are, you know doing better than others, we'll say. But we, we do have a decent number of plants, um, as well as some starts that we purchased from local nurseries slash big box, you know, Home Depot, Fred Meyers, things like that, um, for varieties that we weren't able to get via seed. And we knew we weren't gonna get them via seed. So, you know, basically what I'm saying is we had a good amount of tomato plants for the size of area that we were going to be planting in. But one of the things that I was thinking about is the space that I have. Even though we have twice as much space as we do, did before, you know, before last year, it, it's, it feels like it's going really, really quickly. And one of the plants that seems to take up a decent amount of space are are tomatoes. So my thought was, are there such thing as dwarf tomatoes? Which to me seems like they would be perfect for container gardening. And if there are, I want to get some of those so I can expand my my tomato empire. 
um, <laughs> and, and, you know, enjoy some additional varieties and things like that. So that's what led me to a Google search for dwarf tomatoes, which led me to the Victory Seed Company. And um, what intrigued me was when I looked at it, they have what is called a dwarf tomato project. And this is from their website. It says it's an opportunity for space challenged gardeners to experience the different colors and delicious flavors of heirloom varieties of compact plants. The varieties were all made possible and made available to you by the dwarf tomato project, a group of all volunteer amateur hobby gardeners led by Craig Lehoulier. I hope I'm saying that right. And Petrina Nuski Small or Nuske Small. Again, I hope I'm saying that right. And then there's a, some other information. So what intrigued me was A, the opportunity to have gorgeous heirloom varieties in a small plant suitable for small container gardening, as well as the idea that people like me, obviously with far more experience, <laughs> far more um, abilities than I have as, as an amateur, took their knowledge and propagated seeds and crossed them and made new varieties. And they are here sharing those, obviously for sale, um, for other people to try. So yes, that, that was very intriguing. And I went in, I looked at the different photos and picked the ones that seemed the most interesting to me. And so here we are. Now that said, I did also purchase some flower um, seeds from them. I got the Plains Coreopsis. Now this one is supposed to have deep red, bronze, and yellow color, uh, colored flowers with red centers. I also picked up um, some basil. So basil Italian large leaf. Something called a blanket flower. The bee plant Rocky Mountain. So um, another, another flower. And now we're getting into the actual tomatoes. Now for most of these, because I am conscious about how much space I have, some of these I am doing only one start or one planting. A few of them I am doing two. And um, keep an eye out for a future video where I will be doing my seed starting for these tomatoes and I'm gonna I'm using a little bit different method than what I did before so hopefully that'll be interesting to the folks that are um, watching at that time so now if you hear rustling it's because I'm looking at my notes here but this is the Adelaide festival now the website said it's got a fruit its fruit is a rich purple clear skinned black was in parentheses I think with green stripes that ripen to an olive gold. I will say though, when I looked at the photo, I didn't see anything that looked purpley to me. So I don't know if that was just the quality of the light or why that didn't particularly pre present itself, but that's what they say for the description. Um, this one, I, I actually bought two packets because you only get 10 seeds in each and most of the other ones you get 20. The Dwarf Beauty King is also one that only gets 10 seeds. I only purchased one of those. Now the Beauty King says it's red in color with vertical gold striping and it's a medium sized fruit and very productive. The Dwarf Goldfinch is a medium to large fruit with bright yellow coloring. And, and really, honestly, that's what drew me to uh, decide to pick that one. It was, it was very golden and yellow is my favorite color. So I said, why the heck not? Uh, Dwarf Laura's Bounty is a productive, medium-sized orange paste type tomato. Um, and the way that I saw it, it kind of had a grape tomato shape or aroma. Uh, the size, of course, being larger than the typical grape tomato. Uh, the next one is snake bite, dwarf snake bite. It is a three to four foot tall um, plant. It was it's pink colored with tangy and tart um, flesh. And it's always you know, so weird to say flesh when you're talking about, you know, your fruits and your veg and stuff like that. But uh, they did say it does make a nice slicing tomato. The next one we have is dwarf Stony Brook heart. And this one was definitely one that I picked because of the, the look of it. It is a heart shaped scarlet color with jagged golden stripes, 
fruit. And I'm really hoping that these do germinate and they do well so I can see if that ring is true. Next is Wilpena. Wilpena. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It um, has a red meaty fruit that averages about 8 to 12 ounces. Um, they had a quick note that said it seems prone to double blossomed first fruits that can get up to 28 ounces. I don't know exactly what that means, but taking it from context, I'm thinking it means that it's like multi-lobed um, because when they talk about blossom end rot, they're talking about the, the bottom getting all icky. So maybe it has two, two butts, you know, <laughs> That's my guess, <laughs> so I could be wrong. Um, and then we have the dwarf Russian swirl, which is a medium-sized yellow um, fruit with red-colored swirls in it, and they said it gets between 4 and 12 ounces. So those I actually currently have potted, and there will be a video coming out of, of that activity. So next, we're looking at the beautiful botanical interests that we got from Coastal Farms. And some of these um, I've already talked about because they were in other videos when I did the planting or I discussed you know, what I had planted. And most of these are currently in our first raised bed, which right now is the only bed that you guys know about <laughs> that's been planted out. <laughs> Um, and so um, there, these I do plan to utilize in the other beds to, you know, bring pollinators and stuff like that, as well as, you know, pops of color in. But so this first one are cut and come again zinnias. Now I will say I'm not sure if these are going to germinate because it's obviously not warm yet. We're, we're going to be getting our first 70 degree, degree days um, coming up and actually potentially into the 80s starting, I think, tomorrow at the latest Wednesday, which I'm very excited about. But it may have stayed cold and rainy long enough that these either will be delayed in germinating until, you know, the temperature comes up or maybe they've even rotted where I put them. I don't know. But so far, I haven't seen anything come up yet that makes me think the two seeds that I put in took. So... I'll have to keep an eye on that. Next we have, oops, our gourmet blend beets. So a bunch of different kinds of beets with different coloring. I don't eat beets. I've never had beets before. Scott was very interested in purchasing these. He handled the um, planting of them. And I have started to see some plants coming up that I'm pretty sure are the beets. So that's exciting. I did tell him I would give some a try. Um, I hope I do not regret <laughs> opening myself up to that because I am absolutely a very picky eater. I know typically what I like and if it's something that I've never tried before, I tend to be fairly hesitant to break out of my comfort zone um, because the last thing I want is something that tastes yucky. So, but anyway, I digress. We also have the Sunflower Dwarf Sunspot, as well as the Sunflower Dwarf Teddy Bear. These ones, I, I really hope that they do germinate and come up. They're so cute. I just, I'm very excited to see some fuzzy sunflowers. Now, these next two I have not planted anywhere um, that I can remember. Let me double check. No, I have not done that yet. Um, we've got Cosmo Bright Lights Blend, and I plan on sprinkling some of these. Um, around various areas in the bin and I think I'll probably be putting some in the last green stock that we still have that has not actually been fully planned out yet and then some really pretty pink or salmon colored zinnias called senora I am gonna have to wait on these because when I was looking online uh, the weather temperature that they say that they prefer and that they really don't like cold weather was I think 70 degrees so it needs to be like a sustained 70 um, which is why I don't know that those cut and come again versions are gonna do what they they need to do um, I, I do hope that by waiting that'll be a better situation for for those ones okay now then this one Johnny Seeds. Um, I believe it's just Johnny Seed. Yeah, johnnyseeds.com. Unfortunately, I cannot give credit, you know, where it's due as to how I heard about Johnny's, but I did go there specifically to get flowers. Now, my 
limited, limited experience with planting flowers consists of buying, you know, wildflower packets and just flinging them in parts of our yard and hoping for the best. Rarely did that actually result in anything useful. I also planted one, <laughs> one calendula seed last fall. And I will tell you, I, it had, it did germinate. It grew. It had like two or three flowers on it for the fall. It struggled. It tried to put out additional flowers over the winter and it lived. So it, it is currently alive and well and growing new flowers. There's actually one that has um, bloomed and is it's looking very beautiful with its, you know, orangey yellow color. Um, and it is in the green stock, when the green stock tier that I'd planted it in. And um, I'll probably leave it there though. I think I'm gonna have to see if I can temporarily transplant it out so that I can refresh the soil that's going to go into that particular tier once we're ready to plant other things. But So that's really the extent of my flower seed starting and it's a little bit different than what we're going to be doing with these because I will be starting these indoors and that I have never done. So this is absolutely going to be a, a first timer situation for me. I would like to assume it's going to be very similar to doing vegetables, but I don't know. I I could be way off on that. Um, it seems, it does seem like they are somewhat a little bit more finicky when I read the descriptions and stuff. And they seem, a lot of them have a very long maturity date. So what I've decided is I'm not going to be planting more than two or three seeds for each of, of the packets. Um, one, because this is my first time doing it, I don't want to put a whole bunch of seeds in, not really knowing what I'm doing and thus wasting them. And two, I have a feeling that I'm starting this process a little late for a, a fair number of these. And it doesn't, again, make sense for me to waste the seeds if they're not going to fully mature and be available and beautiful. Um, for, you know, maybe a couple of weeks and then cooler weather comes and, and that's the end of that. I think next year, instead of starting my tomatoes as early as I did this year and, and am now reaping the not benefits of that, um, I may start my seeds early and hopefully that'll, that'll give us a, a little bit better situation. So without further ado, we will get started. So I've got iron purple and the, and the flower is called stock and it's a, it's a deep purple color. I love the color of it. And looking at the, the picture, it's got a crinkly, almost carnation like flower. Um, it was interesting. They did say it only has one flowering stem per plant. So if I really like this and it does well and I'm, I'm okay at growing them, I'll probably need to get more just to, to have multiple flowers. Um, and that's not something I really paid close attention to until I was reading through so I could get, you know, descriptions for you. So that'll be something I have to keep in mind. Next one is King Sized Apricot Aster. Gorgeous. Oh, the photos of this are so pretty. It says that it's a double and semi-double bloom. And to me, the, the blooms remind me quite a bit of dahlias. I don't know if they're related or anything. I know uh, almost nothing about flowers, but they were very big. The plant itself, I think they said, gets to be 34 to 40 inches. Oh, but the flowers, they were just lovely. Beautiful, you know, kind of just very pretty apricot pastel-y coloring. I hope those those do well. The next are Double Click Snow Puff, which is a Cosmo, and that one's got a pure white. Um, there's a little bit of like a soft pink to it, tinge to it, double and semi-double blooms. They did say that pinching these encourages branching. So if I do get anything to go, I need to remember to do that so I get more bang for my buck. Oh my gosh, okay, these guys, <laughs> they're called Sunball. Uh, they're Craspidia. Or speed, spedia. They're also known as drumstick. The picture, they're just so cute. I, I just, I couldn't say no. Uh, they're, they're like one inch diameter balls that are on really long stems. They have like, it 
it seems really textural, almost like a nubby carpet, but not quite. I mean, it, it's not necessarily raised bumps. I, I'm definitely not doing it justice as far as trying to explain what I see when I look at the photo. Uh, but suffice to say, I'm very excited for these. They remind me of kind of like those kid alien antennas that you can get on little headbands. And I think they would, they'll be just super adorable. So I'm, I'm hopeful. And plus they are yellow. So, you know, my favorite color. Next up, these have, these were pale pink, very delicate looking. Uh, they said they get to about two to three feet tall. And to me, they've got like the look of a Queen Anne's lace flower. But when I look at Queen's Anne lace, it, it kind of has a snowflake, you know, like the traditional snowflake look to it, to the shape of the, the flower head itself in some cases. But this one didn't have that kind of geometry to it. It, it was a little bit rounder. And the florets kind of reminded me of like lilac blossoms. Now... Again, I, I'm going by photos, so I could be making a description that makes absolutely no sense and has no link to, re, to how it really is, but that's just the way it struck me. Very, it seemed very petite and pretty and light and, and delicate and, and, you know, all the things that I will 100% admit that I am not, <laughs> but I do like that in flowers, so I will take it. The next one is QIS and you can see it is trademarked. I did watch a couple of videos on it and so it's called Kiss and it's orange. It's in Gomfria, Gomfrina, which is also called Globe Amaranth. And this one is the Hagen, Hagiana. Oh, I've watched videos on this and so I know I'm saying that wrong, but I loved this because of the color of them, just so vibrant and, and deep. And it, the shape of it reminded me almost like those purple clovers with that um, kind of almost acorn shape that, you know, comes and tapers to the top a little bit. Uh, it's more, and these ones are more elongated than the other uh, type of globe amaranth, which are uh, far more circular and spherical. Now, here's one uh, that I have planted and again, don't know if it's actually going to do anything. It's called Fever Few, uh, Magic Lime Green. And we planted some of this on one side of that first raised bed. And it is supposed to have lime green to pale yellow flowers. I will say in the photo, I did not see any ev uh, evidence of the lime green. It's very, they're really cute. They've got kind of like a, a button-like look. The flowers in the photo had a yellow center with like a white outer fringe. I hesitate to say it was like daisy-like because it absolutely does not have those kinds of petals, but it had, it was like an abstract daisy almost, but very cute. I, I very much like that. And I, I really hope that they do grow. Next is the Salvia Victoria Blue. And this has actually got an alternative name of Mealy, Mealy Cup Sage. Uh, the blue on the photo was very vibrant, really deep, and they have kind of s these feathery spike looking flowers. And it really actually kind of looked like an astilbe to me, but not, I mean, similar, not, not like, oh, they're, they're clearly like related or anything like that. That's, that's just what struck me was, and mostly because of the featheriness of the, of the, um, flowering and so I think this would be really, really pretty if the color actually runs true. Now, the next one is kind of an old standard. It's a uh, Snapdragons. This one's Potomac Orange. Uh, so I'm not gonna get into the description of what a Snapdragon is. Um, those are fairly well known, but they had a ton of different Snapdragons. And quite frankly, my shopping cart probably had about 10 of them because I just, I struggled with, letting go of all the different colors that I wanted. But you know, I'm limited in the places that I can plant them. So I, I finally narrowed it down to one. Um, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm really kind of thinking I might go and buy a couple more. I think these one, yeah, these ones are the orange. So they're just vibrant, vibrant, vibrant. Um, and so that, that's what put it over the top against all the others that they, they were beautiful, but this one just had such color to it that I said, okay, if I can only get one, I'm going to get these. Like I said, I'm 
I find my way back to that website and get a couple more. Okay, so the next is Copper Red. It's a straw flower. Now, I've heard that these are really good for drying. Um, they hold up really well. I I've never really dried flowers. I that's not a lifestyle choice for me or or even a decorating choice for me. I tend to like my flowers to stay on their plant, but this one, the flower is almost had, has a ranunculus look to me. Um, and the color is just like this dark, bur orange, umber, red. I mean, I would say that they're fall colors, but they're kind of like a more than just fall. They're like a, a Halloween deep, you know, fall color with, with soul or something. I don't know. I, I sound like a nitwit, um, but I just, I can't explain it. It's, it's not just the fall colors you see out there. There, there was more depth to them in the photo to me, at least. Um, and then second to last, we are at the Rudbeckia triloba, which they also call brown eyed Susan. These we also planted on the opposite side of the raised bed um, from the um, fever few. And uh, these ones, they, they, I don't know if you're familiar with brown eyed Susans, but they've got a daisy like flower, bright yellow petals. The center is usually, you know, a dark brown or black. Very, very cute. Um, what was interesting and what I totally didn't pay attention to when I purchased it, uh, is it said that it's best to pre-chill for 30 days. And then when you go to plant them, you just want to press them into the soil with a very, very light covering, like 1 64th inch, so barely anything. Um, and they do reseed. But the fact that it says that you should chill it for 30 days and what it said was, you know, put it in um, like a paper, a moist paper towel, put it in your refrigerator for the 30 days, and then you go and, and do your seed sowing. Um, but it, I'm trying to think if that one, oh, well, duh. Why don't I look at the back? Um, yeah, you can direct seed sow them. And in this case, it doesn't mention something about transplanting being recommended. Um, like it does like in some of these other ones, they will put recommended if they recommend that. So it sounds like you could go either way. And then last but not least, these are actually kind of my favorite things that I purchased. Uh, Voyage 2 First Love, and it's the Lysianthus. Very lush, very plush flowers. Um, they've got like this white ruffles of petals and uh, just just the hint of pink on some of the edges of them it's just beautiful it feels like a a decadent flower to me at least from the photos that i saw um it has a huge maturity date 140 to 150 days and this is the one i'm thinking about when i'm like oh boy i'm starting this way too late it does say that it needs light for germination uh, so I don't know, it might be a little bit of a fussy seed and actually I, I opened this. It was interesting to me because it, it's apparently a pelleted seed. Um, I was really curious because this is the only seed packet that's like poofy. Um, but see, they've got, they're yellow and it looks like they have some kind of coating on them. I don't know if you can see that very well. Anyway, I don't know. I, this one, I'll probably only do one because A, oh my gosh, I really, really want these to do well. But B, I also know I'm definitely not putting them in the best position to be successful um, being this late into the season, and especially if they're a little finicky. So... I don't want to use up all the seeds that I have because there's not a ton. Um, I don't remember if it says how many seeds are in here. There's a minimum of 50 seeds. I guess that's a decent number. Um, but yeah, so this is all going to be an experiment. There's an experiment with all the flowers that I'm doing. There's an experiment with the way that I planted the um, these tomatoes. There's an experiment because I've never done dwarf tomatoes either uh, so a lot of a lot of new opportunities here 
Um, and I hope they all go well. I think that's it. I, th I want to thank you so much for spending the time with me, especially with these longer videos. I know your time is precious and it, it warms my heart that you are willing to spend some of it with me. I will say if you have any experience with Victory Seed Company, Johnny Seeds, you know, uh, please drop a note in the comments with, you know, what you purchased, what you recommend, how things went. I'm absolutely all ears. I'd love to, to know how how you liked them, what you didn't like, all of that stuff. Uh, if you enjoy seeing our progress, you know, learning about the new things that we have on deck, how things are going on things that we've worked on previously, whether it's the landscaping projects, the seed starting, the actual growing of the um, <laughs> fruits, vegetables, etc. that we have going on, especially now that the growing season seems to be getting into full swing here in Oregon. Uh, please consider subscribing and I hope you have an absolutely fantastic evening. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.